Hey guys, today I'll be recording my gameplay of uh, my first playthrough of Chapter 9, which has just been translated into English and traditional Chinese. With that, let's get started. Okay, first quest. Uh, let's do this. The Mysterious Transient Student Redux. So that's a callback to the the name of the first quest, the very first qu uh, main quest, I believe. I wonder what kind of callback that will be, but it's appropriate for being the first quest of chapter of, of book two or part two of this entire story. Uh, let's just go with uh, Primal Meridians, very famous Babylon. So I'm not going to go for it. any prepared teams, obviously, since this is a blind playthrough. I'll just go for uh, my team that kills everyone. Uh, plus Slave, because he's there for emotional support. <laughs> Crafter's Karmic Engine. Have you ever had anyone you could truly call an enemy? Ooh, <laughs> that's a turnaround from the very first chapter. That question in the back of your mind forces all of your previous feelings to come rushing back. You dream of a world brilliant and shining. It's a paradise where all of your wishes can come true. You remember it vividly now. You can recall it all. That voice, which, which pities you so. Those kind eyes, which watch over you. And that wall, which so benevolently divides you. You remember that world pushing you away so lovingly, wishing you only the best. Suddenly, you hear someone calling from behind you. You don't know who the voice belongs to. Perhaps it isn't even a voice. Shouldering that burden, you press on. The only memories you entertain are those of satisfaction. The heck? I'm pretty sure the voice was ahead of us before. Soon, light begins to fill your vision. You turn your back on that world. Now, open your eyes. There is no need to be afraid. The end of this world revolves around a story. The story you and your most bitter enemies share. The fuck? Blake. The creature opens its eyes, lying in the torrential downpour beating down on Shinjuku Central Park. Where? Where am I? Oh, my head is killing me. The creature is covered in wounds. Its body seems to creak as it simply tries to move. How did I get here? No, wait. Who even am I? I can't remember anything. Do I have amnesia? The creature trails off, noticing that it is surrounded. Huh. We found a machine of unknown affiliation while searching for the intruder. We believe that it is based on technology from s the system of Utopia. Moving in to seize the apparatus as dictated by the parameters of conduct installed. Over and out. Shit! The creature takes off at full speed just a moment before the rubber bullets come raining down. It moves as though it is highly trained elite soldier. Such movements are programmed into its body. Drawing the gun at its hip, it returns fire. Just like that, a battle breaks out, disturbing the peace of the quiet park. Oh boy. Are we playing as Blake now? Uh, I have never narrated anything before, so if I have like 
same voice syndrome for everyone or if my voice acting is kind of laughable yes that is what it would be like for my first time so uh, just deal with it and watch me improve hopefully <laughs> uh it's too dark i can't see come on you're so unlucky master i can't believe it started raining like this out of nowhere over here let's cut through the park right i'll leave you behind if you don't come fast ah! wait don't abandon me uh, I need to find a shortcut. Wait a second. This, this park is... Hey, Master, do you remember? This is where we first met. <laughs> Coming to this park sure brings back memories. Ah, uh, the good old days. That's right. I swept in and saved you. Those were the times, right? Right, Master? Do you feel the same? I don't think that happened. Don't try to rewrite history. Huh? Did you forget? You're running away for your life! <laughs> don't forget that you would have been done for if I hadn't shown up. Uh, thanks, but where have you been since? Why don't you help me out all the time? Seriously? Come on, it's not like I can just teach you everything. I've been appointed as your servant ever since I could talk. I'm still learning from the handbook they gave me, so throw me a bone! Uh, who exactly appointed you? And who gave you that book? Uh, um, <laughs> anyway, all I'm saying is you should take better care of me. <laughs> I mean, I'm always with you, and you're always making new friends and leaving me in the dust. I can't do anything else when you're using your sacred artifacts, so even if I'm not with you all the time, still... I still... You can't be so rude to me. I don't like to be left behind. You'll be real sad if I suddenly disappear, you know. You never know when someone's just going to be gone. Forever. I... Oh. <laughs> Master? Master? Are you still listening? You've been acting weird recently. What the heck? Does he not? I guess he wasn't there when it happened. He was like, in his little Salmon hole, being useless as usual. Huh? Master, stop for a second. My Salmon senses are tingling. Over there! It sounds like something's up. Oh yeah, I hear something too. What could it be? Oh, I missed this. You're going over there? I swear, you've got no survival instinct. Let's... let's just take a peek and then go straight home. Otherwise, here's gonna get really mad at you. Got it? <laughs> a high kick battle rages on amidst the downpour. All the while, the creatures find themselves able to see right through its assailant's tactics. Machine troopers. I seem to know what they're capable of, but how? The creature questions itself. It knows it can't remember anything, yet its body seems seemingly churns through the battlefield, directed by muscle memory alone. It doesn't have the time to stop and think as the park is showered with a rain of bullets. Shit! My leg! Back pressed to a wall, this creature knows it can't avoid the next incoming attack. Its breathing grows rapid with anxious anticipation. Target acquired. The machine trooper's eyes light up as they take aim. So, this is it? I'm gonna die alone in some mysterious place? I'm gonna die all alone like this? Hell, I can't even remember my own name! Nobody will ever know what happened to me. Nothing will be able to be off behind. No! I still have things to take care of. That's right. I... I have orders. I have... Orders?
Stop right there. You fly at the creatures from the side, attacking it out of the way. In the next instant, the machine troopers fire. One of their bolts graze your backs in a very close call. Who are you? I'm here to save you. Are you okay? A civilian child? Run! Forgetting about what's happening, uh, about the chaos all around, the creature screams a warning. That scream seems to come from something deep inside, some inherent instinct. I'll distract him. Get out of here. You must run. No way I'll do that again. You? Taking him back, the creature shouts in response. That shout is the will of one who lives for battle. What can an unarmed child like you do in the heart of a fight like this? Huh? What? What is that thing? What? Why? Wait a sec. Master! Engaging battle zone! Huh? Engrave my name unto thee. Come forth, boundless tail. Using the power of the incantation to materialize your sword, you cut down a machine trooper in a single strike. Who are you? Confirming the presence of a third party. Booting termination sequence. Your blade gleams in the moonlight. There, among the leaves of Shinjuku Central Park. The fuse is lit, shaking slaking ominously toward the explosive impact of yet another battle. Ooh boy, my voice acting scrap. But man, what the heck? So he does remember, but it's so little someone's just like <laughs> casually pretending it never happened. What a fucking punk. Jesus Christ, three of them just died, or like is probably not actually dead, yeah, but you know. Yeah, like, yeah. For all intents and purposes, they're dead. <laughs> Okay, maybe it went, went a bit too overpowered for this team. <laughs> yeah, Did they really have to open the story with battle.ogg of all songs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it was never gonna be difficult anyways, this first chapter. Alright. To the next chapter. What in the world? The creature blinks incredulously, serving the screen, the scene unfolding for it. Then, with a slice of your sword, you render the final machine trooper incapable of moving. What? What are you? Come with me if you want to live! Before you can act, the creature grabs your hand and takes off running. However, As though to muffle its words, an enormous shockwave knocks several trees over, starting small blazes throughout the park. Then, they appear. The... Huh. Reinforcements? These are the same model as those machine troopers I just fought. Did they sneak up on us during the last fight? You instantly ready your blade and cut through the troopers that have just appeared. However, they brought allies? In the blink of an eye, you get knocked back hard. Crap! Temporary change of target. Threat level high. Exercise extreme caution. The reinforcement robot turns its back towards the wounded creature, as if to say they can take it out at any second. Blech. They're going after him instead of me now? What should I do? What should I do? I can't beat these. You already have the answer to that. 
Huh? Who's there? Show yourself. There, in your hand. The power that you've imagined. What the? My Supiloi and a God of Blade? Clutched in the creature's hand is a newly appeared sword, much the same as that which just now saved it. This is... I... What am I? I don't understand what's going on. Its body adapts, seeming to set its confusion aside. Look out! Hurrah! With a vicious scream, the creature cleaves the machine trooper in two. Unlike the chaotic state of its memories, those movements are like the instincts of a well-owned warrior. Whoa, that's so cool. How am I able to do this? Why is this... What am I? Don't question it. This is our chance. Let's get out of here. Got it. <sighs> this should be far enough. I've never seen this place before. At least, I don't think I have. What are those things after? Why are they trying to kill me? No, it's just... I'm... Who am I? <sighs> I don't know what's going on. The creature keeps repeating those same words over and over. Suddenly, it turns face to you. You. Did you lose your memories? It... It would appear so. Can you remember your name? M my name? Um... My name is... F Fre... Um... My name is... God of War, the results of a system that seeks revolutionary progress through battle. We in Tokyo know that as our plan B, therefore you should adopt the letter to your original name. B Break. That's right. My name is Break. Yeah, that's it. Somehow, I managed to remember your name, if nothing else. Nice to meet you, Break. My name's Arison. Arison. There's one more thing I want to know. Do you know where we are? This is Shinjuku Central Park in the Shinjuku Ward of Tokyo. Tokyo. Shinjuku. Central Park. Hmm. The creature seems to stiffen up at hearing the string of previously unknown words. Do you remember anything? I found this. Is that a military ID? Hey, let's go for this one. Gamera has one too. Heh. <laughs> Dog tag. Military, you say? That's right. I think I was in the military. You look like you fought before. I can't remember anything other than that, though. So. I'm not even sure what words or clues might actually be memories or not. Shit. You'll be alright. Let's think this together. Why? Why would you do this for me? You stand to gain nothing by saving me. Why would you willingly put yourself in danger? <sighs> you need to get out of here before those troopers. Hey. You're just like me, so... I... Heard the same? You lost your memories too? <sighs> just wait here. I'll bring some friends. I'm sure they can help. How strange you are. Alright, I get it. I'll wait here if that's what you want. 
Perfect. I'll, right be, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I guess we're like the Ryota of this story now. Oh my gosh! Uh, that's so... There's something really like iconic about that. First Ryota helped us, and now we're helping Break. Mm. Break regains his composure as he watches you run off. He suddenly noticed just how thirsty he is. <laughs> oh boy. What a mood. Locating a bathroom where he can drink from a tap he sees. What the? Is that my face? Am I covered in fur? For the first time, the creature notices the large amounts of fur obscuring its face as it looks into the bathroom mirror. Um... Then and there, the creature learns of its physical form. What is this? I'm... A wolf man? I'm not a human? <sighs> what? Beneath its layer of fur lies a mess of cuts and bruises. Further beneath that, electronics. What's the meaning of this? Don't tell me. I'm actually part of a gay for a gotcha game. This can't be! No, let's see. Am I not even a living being? At that moment, a voice resounds. That's correct. You are no longer what could be considered an organic being. You are now a furry. <laughs> you are neither human nor wolf, yet nor are you what amounts to a typical machine. Who is that? Where are you? I heard your voice earlier too. I'm right here. You've surely noticed by now. You simply want to accept you simply don't want to accept reality, do you? <sighs> don't tell me. Break puts his hands to it, overcome with despair. I am inside of you, of course. Lucky. What did you just say? What the hell am I? Break tries to maintain his composure as he addresses the voice inside his head. There are no words in this world to describe what we are. We are, after all, not of this world. No analog for us exists in this world. We are singular. <laughs> Something seems to be expanding inside of the creature. <laughs> this fucking game. <laughs> A wind blows through, leaving nothing and nobody. Damn. Way to ghost. The protagonist, way to ghost me! Hello, Karen. Huh. If you are too recklessly... If you are to recklessly unify multiple memories, it's only natural that the recipient would become mentally unstable. I suppose we should have separate uh, rule, rules and rules after all. Yes, we should have cut them away. We should have set up such as safety measures in place. It seems that to bind thoughts and memories from multiple worlds into one vessel, we need the likes of that ring sacred artifact, like Kambaris. If we wish to progress through assimilation, plan A is best. If we wish to progress through battle, then plan B. If we wish to progress through cultivation, plan C would be superior. Finally, however, is the, the backup plan. <laughs> plan duo. Okay. Duo lease up. Very, very funny. Even if the three primary plans were joined into one initiative, they would only go so far. Lab grown geniuses are so hollow. Even in an imitation, however, the seeds of progress through technological innovation are now sown. Let's turn to the East Transcendental One. We must welcome Duo's return. The massive robot picks up the girl in wait, then flies off into the night sky. Break! I'm back! Uh... Huh? Break is nowhere to be seen. The lamps strewn about the park only, only the rain-soaked ground. Break! 
Where did he go? A gust of wind blows through the park, scattering blue fur across the ground, which then fades to nothingness. That, uh, that wolf in there? No, he's the same as us? Is that how we'll, we'll end up? The ring, wrapped around Lil Salmon's horn, glimmers in the dim light. That ring? Salmon's sacred artifact? Salmon has a sacred artifact? Shadows in the library, no battle. Someone once said, this is your end, the house of finality. They said that it was my eternal paradise. They told me that it would be impossible for me to escape my paradise and trap by walls. Whoa, this is pretty. Is this just like the, a redesign of the old background or is this a complete new background? Wow. In eastern Tokyo, within the cathedral, a lone cyborg appears. Its polished metal body gleams in the light, standing in stark contrast to the dark church. Hello, New Year's guy, Algernon. The sound of varying motors echoes as the cyborg approaches the back of the cathedral, and someone calls out to it. Nice work. I see why they call you the cleaner. Ha, <laughs> fucking yet. Three sacred artifacts lie next to Michael. Their user is nowhere in sight. The cyborg known as the cleaner stops in its tracks. Its visor flares to life. Are you pleased with the results of this job? The cyborg's eyes flickers as an almost charming synthetic voice flows from speakers located on either side of its helmet. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I should be talking in the feminine voice most of the time when it comes to Algernon. His AI. Aha! You've most definitely dealt with garbage around town. You were, you were just as I'd expected. Then I'll just need you to sign off on this job, and my buddy and I will be on our that was the voice again. Oops. The cyborg cautiously glances at the two standing to Michael's side. Uh, uh, I can't really do the falsetto. <laughs> I take it that your grilled representative is a young lady being pr protected by the transcendental one from Utopia, correct? The cyborg's helmet flickers as it meets gazes with the girls in white, flanked by a masked robot. Oof. My grammar. Hmm. Hmm? Hmm. Ah, please don't worry about our guildmaster's taciturnity. She's not hiding more than a figurehead. She's nothing more than a figurehead. I am acting guild as guildmaster in her stead. Michael grabs the pen and paper, scrawls down his signature, and then returns it to the cyborg. Thank you kindly. Hmm. Just a figurehead, eh? I, I see. Now everyone's still someone. Seeing as your kind are the results of modification experiments in Utopia, you must be concerned. You see, the ones who provided the technology to modify your body is the robotic puppet you see serving our guildmaster. N not that your lot and our guildmaster were the only ones who were created as such, but well. Amaterasu casts her eyes towards Duo, who is standing at a distance. Mm, Duo Lisa. Hey now, I didn't mean it like that. We're both happy with the results of our modification. Well, there's still questions of our long-term pr prognosis, but that's by the by. We finally obtained the accelerated perception we longed for, all thanks to Utopia's mastery of time, but... It's brought us to a wall we can't surpass. A natural limit, if you will. Well, never mind that. You know what they say about gift horses, and we're certainly not going to look this one in the mouth. 
Human intelligence is more than most mice could ever hope for in their little lifetimes, after all. Ha! Ha! <sighs> hmm. Silence from the crowd, huh? And here I thought I was a pretty decent joke. Ooh, I need to stop skipping words. Looks like I still have a lot more reading to do about this comedy business. Sorry if I've gotten and made things awkward. Alright, I'll be seeing myself out, if you know of anything. Else that needs cleaning, you know who to call. <laughs> the eccentric pair that compromise the cleaner turn on their heels and leave the cathedral. A short while after the sound of gears dies down, Michael speaks up. Now, it was decent from the start that Asasoth and Searcher would be the first of our representatives to fall. We knew it would happen. It always does, after all. However, I never expected that this would happen to them. The group looks concerned as they glance at the sacred artifacts lying on the pulpit. Oh fuck, that's their sacred artifacts! <laughs> Obviously, shit! The cleaner had taken them from the field of battle. They are vessels that had fallen alongside their wielders. So they're really dead? Shit. Searcher, the Black Helmet. Babylon, the Golden Chalice. Azestoth, the Throne. The members of the Genociders have been reduced to mere systems. What the fuck is a system supposed to be? I wrote some shit about it on the wiki, and I, based on the vague times that was mentioned before in chapter 8 and before, but I, I honestly still don't understand what a system is. Hopefully it's clarified. Does that mean the three of them were able to fulfill their roles here in, in this Tokyo? I understand certain as with us, but why did it extend to... What wish might that woman ha have possibly? I'm sorry. Please ignore my points. As far as I know, thanks to the memories of my boulder sacred artifact, which is rooted deep in the pit of darkness and blocks even the sun, nothing like this has ever happened before. Is it possible that this loop is somehow different from all that has come before? You're always so reserved, but you're quite talkative today, Amaterasu. I suppose I'm always just afraid to speak up. If it were tedium and lack of change that I sought, I would not take my place on the field of battle. However, until I see my unworthy war mountain of a brother be worshipped as the pillar of this barbaric world, I have sworn to steal my soul with tools of war. Fighting in this fruitless, never-ending battle. <sighs> Amaterasu sways unsteadily, and the lion Therian standing by her side hurriedly offers a shoulder to lean on. Hey, it's Oz. <laughs> what? Uh, are you alright, Amaterasu? Thank you, Oz, my gentle lamb. Thinking of that foolish lout just makes me... Ugh. You're pushing yourself too hard. It's already been ten minutes. You shouldn't be on your feet for so long. My, I had no idea. Ten minutes? That's no good. I must... I must return to our portal. Matarasu. It was nice seeing you. You as well, Michael. Until this paradise is full of gentle lambs. I suppose we'll be working together again. Give my regards to the remaining four. The remaining four? They're like from different worlds, right? Uh, so wh I wonder why they're cooperating. They should be from different worlds, I'm pretty sure. If I'm re remembering correctly. Hmm. Until it's full, eh? Michael! I'm back! Hey, where's Matarasu? It's Corp Booker! The representative of Eden addresses Kamui Kotan representative. The Kamui Kotan representative. That would. Yeah, what, what are all these representatives in cahoots for? Corporaker. Amaterasu just left. 
She said that she needed to return to the portal. How does things look out there, Corpricar? How are the warmongers of the west and the invaders of the south? Okay, so it looks like uh, they are making an alliance of sorts to uh, keep and check the other guilds slash worlds. Ah, uh, well, leave them to me. Here, come, o come over here under my leaf. A small sprite from Kami Kotan is holding a pillar in his hand. Michael extends his hand and touches the leaf in Corpicor's hand. The pillar begins to pour a stream of memories into Michael. Hmm. Michael begins to contemplate as the memories stream into him, even though he's the representative of Eden. He is not the pillar of Eden. What? The tree of life and the tree of knowledge have yet to be summoned into this Tokyo. Okay, so representatives and pillars. Okay, so a pillar refers to both a sacred artifact as well as the person who holds the sacred artifact, I suppose. And the sacred artifact that, like, know, is responsible for the creation of the world, just like Azizoth uh, was the pillar of his world with his throne, but he was also the representative. However, in this case, it looks like they're not necessarily the same thing. The pillar and the representative. The representative looks like someone who can win the game, or like, who would all the power of like, you know, once the game is over and uh, all the power is pulled to one mythology, uh, with, to one world, uh, with that world having hierarchy above all other places, hegemony, uh, the representative would be the one who obtains that power, uh, which is independent, which can be independent from the pillar, which is uh, the sacred artifact as well as the wielder of the sacred artifact that created the world. That is my understanding so far. As such, he must rely on memories held within the pillars of other worlds. Yeah, pillars are stable things uh, that are attached to other worlds uh, that can, like, help them regain memories because it's like the washing of memories that happens within the walls of Tokyo. Uh, because it's considered like a battle zone, I guess, and I guess watching memories happens there due to like infinite loops, as we saw in chapter 8. But yeah, that's how you are able to retain memories that would otherwise be lost to pillars that hold on to those memories uh, from an external source that is independent of the watching within the walls of Tokyo. That is proving to be quite the handicap for him in the current loop. Furthermore, the pillars of each world are only able to hold the memories of events they witnessed firsthand. Because of this, Michael is not able to carry his own memories over. Oh, that's pretty interesting. It is an inconvenience, but... If that rule is established by my homeworld of Eden, then I have no choice but to obey. Hmm, what rule? Also... As long as it determines the treatment of my brother, there is no way I can entrust this battle to the other Archangels. Who's his brother? Can't be Jacob. At least according to the wiki, it seems like Jacob's a human. As the thoughts and searcher have already disqualified, but the other 21 representatives are likely thinking the same thing. Oh yeah, that's right. Even though they are like a family, they are technically representatives of their own worlds. Azathoth was the Old One's world, and uh, Searcher was uh, Yggdrasil. We, who represent other worlds, have all been drawn to this Tokyo, like lions to pr prey. Split up into three armies, guilds, we began fighting one another. Uh, have all been drawn to the three guilds, three armies. Uh, I guess they're just talking about Eden. Maybe? I don't know. Split three ways, seven to each guild. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, now I'm understanding the relationship between guilds and, uh, worlds. Uh, guilds and armies, so... Uh, there are like 21 worlds, uh, 21 guilds, but... There are... There are alliances, it seems that way? And... Those three alliances face each other. And right now we're seeing one of, one of the major 
factions that are all allied with each other. I guess ours would also be considered, uh, you know, between us, the missionaries, the tycoons, they would also be considered a unified army, since it doesn't, didn't look like they are part of cahoots or some larger conspiracy. The first guild is us, the East. Our plan, to elevate a suitable vessel to the divinity for which they are destined. Hold on, I need a second. What the fuck does this mean? Okay, I don't understand. Elevate a suitable vessel to the divinity for which they are destined. Vessel... Like... A sacred artifact? Hmm. Elevate a sacred artifact to the divinity source they just did. Hmm. Did they want to create a better sacred artifact or something? I'm not sure. The next guild is that of the south. They currently scheme to steal that vessel, making it their own. Lastly, the guild to the west, who seeks to plunge this Tokyo into endless war so as to do battle with that vessel for eternity. Is the vessel referring to us, the player? Or, you know, the protagonist? Okay, because this sounds familiar, like, based on the spoilers I've seen anyways. <laughs> uh, thank you, Discord. But yeah, this is referring, obviously, to the warmongers. Which I think I was pulled for this little fact. Thank you, Discord! Stop spoiling me. Uh, the next guild is the South. They currently scheme to steal vessel making. So the, uh, the South just wants... To claim the protagonist as their own. Which makes sense. Seems like missionaries and tycoons and all that were all thirsty for protagonists or something. <laughs> uh, and the warmongers, uh, which is for chapter 10, looks like they want to plunge, uh, just want to do battle. And the first guild. Guilds, right? Why is it three ways? Seven to each guild. Okay, I'm, I'm like so lost. Seven. Okay, we began fighting one another. Three armies. There are three guilds. Uh, we battle endlessly for supremacy. What? Seven what? What are you splitting? Okay, so seven worlds split to each to a specific guild. This doesn't make sense. There's a lot more than three guilds. Are they saying only three guilds matter? Oh boy. This is gonna be something hard to dissect later. Lastly, the guild to the west who seeks to plunge this Tokyo into endless war so as to do battle with that vessel for eternity. I understand the desire. That is precisely why it is so incorrigible. This isn't simply about my brother. We three guilds disagree on our most basic ideals on how we would achieve them. The worst part is... It's all so sad, brother. You, the Supreme Angel of Eden, have become nothing more than a trophy. This paradise was created for you. This system, built with you at its heart. This world is the farthest reach, and it's all... All for you, who was driven out and left with nowhere to run. Fight back, you'll be driven into the depths. Obey, and you'll be driven into the depths. As these meaningless loops continue to pile up, you will be driven further and further into the depths of the system. Whether you try to smile, cry, hate, or love, all you ever hope for is another loop. One more chance. This is it, though. There is nowhere left for you to run. Everyone both loves and hates you. That is exactly why you must continue to slaughter them again and again. Who is his brother? And these idiotic representatives are all stuck in their, this endless system. Hey, Michael! Michael! What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing at all. My apologies. Really? Either way, I kind of like that cold, cruel look in your eyes just now. <laughs> Jesus Christ, corporate girl. <laughs> Those are the eyes of my beloved child. 
Anyway, I have a grasp of the situation. It seems as though the Kitez representative, uh, it should be Peron, emerged from that portal. The young boy nods in agreement with Michael's words. The leaf in his hand shudder. I guess I will need to go to the front lines as well. Thus, the representatives have continued to fight throughout the endless looping cycle. They can never let their guards down, not even around ones such as a Matras or a Corporator. Are those the three they're referring to? I don't even understand anymore. No, they're, they're all in cahoots. They should be within the same thingy, even if they're not single. Not only does that hold towards, uh, towards those who are deemed fitting to wield the artifacts, but the representatives as well are as different as this, the systems in place in each world. Okay, so my idea of what a system is, is just uh, a set of rules set in place, uh, not, you know, rule rule, like, but like a, like a, a universe rule um, of how that world handles stuff like sacred artifacts and um, the divine powers that are held within sacred artifacts from divine beings. Uh, it handles stuff like rules and rules, and I think, uh, depending on the system of the world, if, if there's something not covered, or, or if there's like a, uh, some weird co contradiction happens, that's the cause of exceptions and co uh, stuff like that. A paradise cannot come to be without sacrifice. A paradise world is formed by first deeming that which is and isn't necessary. The various worlds are destined to contradict each other in terms of what they deem necessary and what they strive to achieve. The system which rules over the 23 worlds, 24, including Tokyo, is defined by majority rule. Okay, so it's not the world that rules over once the game is over, it's the system. Which, you know, by proxy means the world, I suppose. Huh. A great overlord, you who shines, you would surely smile upon this. The worlds govern over resources, the connections between them, and the continuity of memories. Yet, somehow, it is laughable. The worlds have yet to find a logic that surpasses majority rule. Oh jeez, too real. The brave archangel remembers the presence of another at his back. The ring that man held, which created the kingdom of a thousand years. The ring another man held? If Solomon had a ring on his horn, maybe he's referring to uh, Mononoba, you know. It wasn't the solution after all, was it? In which case, maybe Mononoba is his brother. I'm really so confusing, man. Shinjuku Academy Classroom 2B. It's time for home. Mr. Mononobi, aka the big uh, hanging plot spoiler, just waiting to be unraveled, standing at the front of the classroom, addresses his students. Alright, I believe you all should have your roadmap prep solution sheets. These will help you plan out your courses for the future. Did we? Did they? Like, I'm so confused. Did they seriously just turn away in Chapter 8 from fucking genociders getting slaughtered? And then they're just going back to home like nothing happened. <laughs> Are they serious? <laughs> you only have a few months left as second years, so it's time to start thinking about what you'll do after you graduate. Mm. I'm sure that some of you already know what you want to do after graduation. However, there are surely some of you who don't. Some of you probably can't see any future before you at all. In fact, there are likely some of you who are beginning to question whether your decisions to date have been even remotely correct. Oh god, too real. <sighs> you must not worry too much though. There are very few decisions that can't be fixed retroactively. Of course, there are some things that you can't go back and fix. You'll probably carry regret over those, however. We teachers are here right now to help you avoid such mistakes by creating your roadmaps. 
You can come and talk to us about anything you think might help lead you to a fulfilling life. Decisions you can't go back and fix. Hmm? You okay? You look a little woozy, Arson. God. <laughs> no flashback for Sheena. <laughs> uh, poor Sheena. Hey, can you hear me, Arson? Mr. Mr. Jean, standing at the back of the classroom, runs to you and grabs you, gently tapping your face. Oh, there's Sheena. Oh, Shino, where did he go? Arison. Everyone? Everyone, calm down. How's that student doing, Mr. Jean? It's okay. You're in a safe space. You can understand what I'm saying to you, Arison. Mr. Jean? Sorry, I, I got a little... Mr. Mononobe, I'm going to take him to the nurse's office. Mr. Jean gathers you, his beloved student, in his arms and carries you to the classroom door. Understood. I'll take care of things here. Alright. Mr. Jean holds you in his strong arms as he rushes you to the nurse's office. All the while, your conscious mind floats into a pure white void. Pretty graphic. You wake up, tucked snugly into a bed in the nurse's office. Is this the nurse's office? Good, you're finally awake. What happened? Did he skip lunch or something? You're not looking so you're not looking so pale now. That's good. Everyone was really worried. <laughs> like he said. Are you sure you're alright? Was Mr. Cheaton too rough with you? When did you get here, Mr. Cheaton? Come to think of it, where are, are Mrs. M Mr. Nonomoe and the other students? Her room just ended, so I power walked over here as quickly as possible. Eh? You power walked? <laughs> Sorry, you two are just so classic. Those teachers look at you, and their faces immediately light up with their relief. I'm just so happy to see you smile. You seemed a bit down the past couple of days. Maybe that's why, but some of your classmates have also seemed a bit off. Mr. No Noe was so worried about you. You should go see him when you're feeling better. Did something happen? There isn't anyone else around right now. You can talk to us if you want to. I'm sorry, I just... You're fine. Some things can be hard to talk about. I'd listen to anything if it was for a student. However, we won't force you to talk. We respect the feelings of our students. If you ever decide you're ready to spill, you'd better come to us. In fact, whenever you have nowhere else to turn, you know, you can always count on us. But if you don't feel comfortable talking to this big lug, just come to me, alright? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Jean and Mr. Treaton leave. You're alone for a short time. There's a nervous sounding knock at your door. Shiro. Excuse me. I'm Shiro Motori from Class 2B. I'm here to see my... Hmm? Where's the nurse? Are you feeling better, Arthur? I came as soon as homeroom ended. Don't worry. I'll put the roadmap resolution sheet in your backpack for you. Kengo and the others are really worried too, but it's not like all of us can cram in here all at once. So I came alone for now. How are you feeling? It hasn't been very long, but... Were you able to rest a little? I'm gonna rest here a bit longer. 
you shouldn't push yourself. I've rescheduled our guild meeting for tomorrow morning. Don't worry. I have a shirt to tell all of the summoners and our guest. Oh, Ark. Duh. Not much time has passed since the ordeal. I suppose you need some space to sort things out. Yeah. I'm sorry for worrying you. I'll tell everyone else you're resting a little longer. If there's anything else you need. And I mean anything. Use the app to get a hold of me. Got it? Thanks, Shira. Got it. Remember that you don't have to shoulder the burden all on your own. I'll see you around. <laughs> don't go! She leaves the nurse's office. In the halls outside, fellow students all bustling to head home. You aren't sure if it's because of the walls separating you from the crowd, but it sounds surprisingly muffled. You've got a club to go to who, right? Do you want me to walk you? Do you want to walk home together after? Hey, let's go on a shopping spree in Shibuya. I want to go to this new restaurant that opened. I've heard it's really good. Ah, my boss is calling. He's probably going to ask me to fill in someone's shift. It's like nothing ever happened. Holy fuck. <laughs> God, <laughs> shit. <laughs> that is way too unsettling. That music shit. You lie in bed, idly listening to the hustle and bustle of the hallway outside. That hellish landscape of Shinjuku and the other five wards completely in ruin. And yet, almost as everyone is just talking casually. There's no recollection of the events. Oh yeah, that's right. Everything reset in terms of, like, everything being fixed. So really, the only ones that remember were the ones directly in battle. Uh, so it really is just, you know, the summoners and the leaders of uh, each of the main guilds, the tycoons, Leek and, and Nofion and Hakuman and, uh, you know, Maria and Arslan. Just basically anyone who was in the battle for Shinjuku, whatever you want to call that battle. It almost makes you want to believe that the vicious battles, the many dead and wounded, were all just some sort of dream. And then, you hear it. Hey, have you heard of the rumors of the old school building? AKA the dungeon building? <laughs> yeah, I have. No, no, I, need to fix. I need to get more gold voices. Yeah, I have. They say some sort of saw some weird ghosts or something. I'm just repeating what I heard from one of our classmates, but... Apparently, if you go in there after sundown, you'll meet the ghost of someone gone from this world. Shit. You mean that old building closest to Shinjuku Central Park, right? They closed it because it is j it's just right beside the gate in Shinjuku. They said it was too dangerous. Yeah, I kinda wanna go. You probably shouldn't. My classmate who went there started feeling pretty feverish and I had to be taken to the hospital. Seriously? I wonder if that's why they haven't torn it down yet. Do you think it's cursed or something? I'm really scared of stuff like that. The old school building. Someone gone from this world. Shino? I'm fucking getting goosebumps from these music cuts. Hey, are you awake? I brought you your stuff. I'll just put it... Huh? Where'd you go? Arison? Oh boy. The dungeons better be translated. For real, yo. They're probably not. I'm gonna be angry. Shadows in the Library 2. Also no battle. 